if you are an executive or leadership coach or otherwise work with people within organizations, particularly leaders and managers, how do you actually get those gigs? How do you do your marketing so that you become a coach uh, within an organization for their you know, managers or leaders? So first of all, I, I know some of you watching this have thoughts on this because you have your own experience or you, you know, have worked in organizations and seen coaches come in, that kind of thing. So please do comment below because I know it'll be really helpful for others to see it. And it's helpful just to because it's 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 a challenging topic. Um, otherwise, every executive coach would be fully you know booked. But as you might know, many executive and leadership coaches are not. And uh, so my experience has been just to set them back on my experience has been really reaching individuals rather than organizations. And so I don't I haven't really done the work of trying. I haven't even really tried to reach organizations. To bring me in to to do their thing to do you know some kind of leadership or other kind of even marketing coaching so i just have experience reaching individuals however i feel like some of these lessons can apply to organizations as well because my bottom line is this it's individuals who bring you into organizations right there's there's no such thing as a some kind of corporate robot <laughs> that you could say yeah you could apply in the traditional realm of somehow going through their vetting, traditional vetting process. And there is some, I'm sure there's lots of wisdom to be had there. And if you have any experience, go ahead and chat below and going through official channels or whatever. But even the official channels are deeply influenced by individuals who are saying, hey, I know we've got some coaches we're vetting, but I've got my friend who's amazing. Let's at least bring her in for like a lunchtime talk or like a Zoom webinar, because I think it's going to, it's going to influence we, we should make the best choice for our organization for these new leaders. And I think we should give my friend a chance. You see what I mean? Like, and if, if that person who's saying this is a friend of the, you know, the uh, leadership and development director or the HR director or the whoever event planner, then there's a, there's a huge influence. So, um, so in other words, even if you only follow all the marketing advice I'm giving you, you're still going to be reaching people like that. And in other words, the more you continue growing your personal brand and your true fan audience, the more naturally some of your fans work within organizations and would bring you in if they only knew that you were available for that kind of thing. So sometimes I talk uh, in... In two, two of my courses, I've talked about this idea of easily referable issue and easily referable offer. And what I mean is easily referable issue is, well, let's talk about leaders and organizations. Um, what is an issue that they are feeling pain around or that they are really eager to figure out, to, to, to grow within? It's some kind of skill or problem. It's either a problem or a skill that they that they're really eager to solve or to grow within. That's an easily referable issue because that leader's friends and family and network and colleagues probably have heard that leader talk about it. That you know, the issue. I don't know what the issue is. Please chat below if you have any ideas of what new leaders within an organization have an issue on. I don't know. Uh, I can't get my team to listen to me. Right. And now if that's an issue, they probably have talked to their spouse about it, their friends about it. Oh my God, I'm 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 new in this role. And just, it's so hard to get my team, wrangle my team to actually listen to to the plan and actually activate it or whatever. Okay, whatever. Let's say that was the issue. That's easily a referable issue because if you post on Facebook, hey, do you know any leaders who can't get their teams to listen to them? It, even if I'm not a leader, I go, Oh my God, my 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 buddy Fred's been telling me this for the past six weeks. Fred's new to you know. So that's easily referable. I can easily go, oh my gosh, you know, I saw this post from, from a trusted source, you know, that's you. And my friend Fred has that issue. So I'm going to forward this post over there. So easily referable issue. And the easily referable offer is, well, how do you package that issue into something that Fred, the leader, could say, can we bring this coach into the organization? Because that's a so the easily referable offer, I don't know what, what I don't know what that meant, might mean. Please comment below. What would an easily referable offer for a company or organization uh, that has leaders who need support be? What would that be? Could it be a lunchtime webinar on Zoom? 
that's easily referable offer because it's like, oh, um, whether it's paid or not, I don't know what the etiquette is these days. I think some organizations would balk at a free webinar or or they wouldn't, right? Some, some would and some wouldn't. So it might be an easily referable offer being the free webinar, lunchtime webinar, or um, it might it be like a um, three-person small group or just, listen, uh, I, I'd be happy to do um, some coaching, sample coaching for the leaders, um, just two sessions for three leaders within organizations. And I don't know what that, so again, I am not, I don't know the etiquette of corporations these days and what the organizations would say as an easily referable offer. I think you need to ask your friends who work in corporate to say, when you guys have brought coaches in, how did they come in? Did they come in through a lunchtime webinar or through a sample coaching session or through a referral service or through, how, how, what was the route in? And if you find that route, then you can lean in on those routes, including letting your Facebook audience, LinkedIn audience, wherever you have as an audience know, hey, listen, um, I'm happy to give this easily referable. You, you don't call it easily referable offer. Nobody knows what that means except those who are watch, watching this. But I'm happy to give this webinar, this this coaching package, this blah, 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 this white paper, this, I don't know why they call it white papers. Most papers white. Um, but um, the, this whatever, this talk, I don't know what, again, please, company people, organization people, help us out by commenting below. What is an easy, I'd be happy to give this. So, but in other words, as you build your audience, you're going to have people who could easily refer you if they only knew what your easily referable offer is. Okay. And um, number two, I do have a, an idea for you that I've been, I've been teaching in the course called Authentic Outreach. For those of you who want to uh, dive into more, getting more clients, check out my Authentic Outreach course. But this here's the idea. And this idea came to me actually uh, naturally because I've been just noticing it in on the web. And then, and then uh, I did it myself and it was helpful. And then uh, years later, I talked to a sales coach who does organizational consulting and companies hire him. And he, he coaches people how to get gigs in companies. And he says his favorite sales method for doing that is similar to what I'm about to tell you, which is you, uh, well, okay. Uh, let me tell you what his method is. Mine that's a little different, but his, his method basically is he has a podcast where he purposely reaches out to potential clients and interviews them. Now, his method and my method are, um, his method is a little bit more deceptive, a little bit more tricky because he makes it look like, so for example, let's say REL, is uh, a potential client of mine within an organization. Uh, Ariel is a, a VP of, of some company. All right. So I would reach out to Ariel and say, Ariel, I've got this podcast and I would be honored to interview you about your industry or your company or whatever it is. Right. And so Ariel says, Oh, wow. Okay, we get some extra press on your popular podcast. It's not really popular, but okay. Um, and then Ariel comes on and I interview Ariel. And, and then after the interview, I say, Ariel, I've got a mastermind of other VPs like you that I'm forming, um, you know, so you, we can talk about the issues that you face as a VP and, you know, that kind of stuff, team issues, you know, retention issues, marketing issues, whatever. Would you be interested? Uh, you know, for the first month, just one month, there's no charge. And so I bring Ariel and Masha and Grace together as VPs, potential clients I've interviewed into this mastermind. It's free. But at the end of the mastermind, we all have such a good time. I'll say, hey, listen, I'd love to continue, but this is actually a service I provide. And if you all want to continue, I'd be happy to continue facilitating. It's, you know, a thousand dollars a month, five hundred dollars a month. And to, to VP, you know, organization people, five hundred dollars a month. Oh, here's out of my change in my pocket, here's five hundred dollars a month. You know, I can do it in quarters, do which you know, they have so much money. Money coming out of the ears, five hundred a month is no big deal or whatever. So um, so yeah, so that's like the the podcast, pretend podcast um uh method. Okay. And that's his favorite sales method. Um, the method that I that I did in the past was a, a bit, hopefully a bit more transparent, is basically I said, listen, I'm writing an in-depth article or making a video series solving this particular issue, an issue that I believe, or I've maybe did some market research and found that the VPs had this issue, okay? But I want to gather some tips from the VPs that have this issue because they've already probably made some inroads into solving it. So I just want to, Hey, Masha, could you give me one tip for solving this, you know, team issue? 
Ariel, could you give me another one, one tip? Grace, could you give me? So I gather these tips and then I give them a due date and all that stuff. Anyway, this is, this is more in depth in my authentic outreach course, but just a quick summary. I gather the tips. I publish the article. I tag them on LinkedIn or wherever. Some of them decide to share it or not, but I essentially kind of borrow their expertise and kind of become an expert myself. Really, I'm doing research, right? But I also know something about it. And I am, I know even more now because I did all this research, maybe 10 leaders or whatever, you know, gave me their tips. I tag them. I become, I become, I, I look like more of an expert now because I, I, I also look credible because I gather these, I know these 10 people. I might have just cold called them and said, hey, I want to feature you and your company in this article kind of thing. So after that, then the, the, then at least there's a connection between me and that person. Um, however you take the connection after that is up to you. You could also form a mastermind, you know, uh, that strategy, or you could just contact them and say, hey, you know what? I love working on this kind of issue with people. I don't know if you want to do an engagement where I where we can actually work on this with your team or whatever, because, um, yeah. So you can you, there's a connection now. It's warmer, and you could broach the subject. And get, so anyway, I hope this is helpful. Looking forward to seeing your tips below as well. Thanks. And uh, someone mentioned in the chat, George, I, I remember you did a talk for an association some time ago. I've talked, I've done talks with several associations. How did you get that gig? Was it through somebody new? This is the proof of what I'm talking about works. I had never reached, I have given talks at several organizations and associations. Like I just did a talk for the NASDAQ Entrepreneurial Center, which mm. sounds like kind of a big deal. It's, uh, but it's, it's, it is sponsored in part by NASDAQ and some big companies actually. And it looks like a big deal, right? Um, I did nothing to reach out to any association, organization, company, even though they brought me in occasionally. It was all because I build my brand. I just do my own thing. And then people who are part of my fan base who work for them or who know someone, that's how it all happens. So essentially, it, it really is a long-term strategy if you just want to go in this direction it does work like you know eventually you, you you write a book you write three books you you um, eventually give ted talks you 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 know have friends who interview you on their podcast so like you start building more and more of your brand naturally there are people and if, and you make it known you make it known that's important on a regular basis that you help organizations and leaders etc cetera, etc cetera, so that they go oh yeah i can bring you in so hope that helps